dear creatures, that will be the day of the thumping, the striking, the greatest catastrophe, the great calamity. That will be the day of Al Qariyah. of that day you got yawm al khulud for example the day of eternity and indeed it will be the day of eternity you got al ghashiyah the overwhelming you got al haqqa the reality you got al waqi'ah the happening the occurrence you got yawm al hasra the day of grief and regret you got yawm al ba'ath yawm al qiyamah the day of resurrection you got yawm al khuruj the day of coming out you got Yom at the day of gathering. There are many, many other names for it. Each name explaining the afflictions that will occur on that day. Al Qari'ah is one of the names of the day of resurrection. It means the striking hour, the thumping, the beating. That name hits the hearts with its engulfing horrors. It is used. For a dreadful disaster, a great calamity, and wallahi, it will be a great calamity indeed on the day of resurrection when the unbelievers will stare in horror as they witness the striking, as they witness that which they did not believe in. Those atheists that did not believe in this, they will witness it on that day and they will wish, they will wish that they can have a second chance. They will forget all the comfort they have ever had on this earth. And they will wish that they sacrifice all they have ever had in the path of truth and righteousness. However, dear brothers and sisters, it is too late. It is too late. Their exam has failed. Their chance is lost. They're no longer on earth. They're finished. They're gone. But we are on earth. Why don't we get prepared for this day? Why don't we prepare ourselves for those scales to be heavy and not low? Throughout our day, we eat, we drink, we sleep, we work, but on your shoulders do not forget. Wallahi, you have angels there. Angels recording every single whisper, every single move that you make. You can never escape them. They are always there recording what you do, how you do it, when you do it. On that day, this will all be exposed. And they will wish on that day that they had never ever been born. 
they will wish that they were still in their graves. And the Kafir will say, would that I was dust. Why does he say that? Why? Let us reflect upon it, brothers and sisters. Let us reflect. Why does he want to be dust? Why? Because he knows his destiny is hellfire. He knows he's lost. As you can see, the word al qariya is immediately followed with a question. mal qariya Suggesting something alarming that's going to happen. mal qariya What is the striker? وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْقَارِعَ And what would explain to you what al qariya is? Then follows the answer. The day when mankind will be like scattered moths. Why scattered moths? Why? If you've got a, a light outside your home, now it's dark. What would you find around that light? It tracks many, many insects, especially moths, mosquitoes and so forth. When you see those moths, those mosquitoes, those insects, they'll be hitting each other. You watch carefully. They'll be hitting each other, hitting the light, falling down, getting up, smashing each other. Man on that day will be in a state of confusion, bewilderment. He'll be wild. He'll be lost. Man on that day will be standing, falling, standing, falling. Others will be walking on their faces. Others will be dragged on their faces. Others will be so small like ants being stamped left, right, wherever they go. Others will come with faces that have no flesh on it. Others will have deep scratches in their faces. Others you will witness with a white face, beautiful face, who will be beaming with light, glittering, shining. And they will be the people of whom? The people of Wudu. May Allah Ta'ala make us among those people. Yani it's a day that you can never ever comprehend until you get to it. You can never understand or imagine until you get to it. While all this is being witnessed, the believer will be in a state of grace and mercy by the Almighty Lord. As the unbeliever, he will be in a state of shock. He will be in extreme fear. He will be in extreme fear because he knows that he has lost the life of this world and the life of the next. وَتَكُونُ الْجِبَالُ كَالْإِهْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ And the mountains will be in a state like carded wool. Carded wool. If you get wool now and you just throw it in the air, is it something that is weightless? No weight at all, just you can throw it and it flies in the air? On that day, the earth will lose its force of gravity. And the mountains being heavy, and establish wall in the floor and the ground, they will be uprooted from their positions. And being uprooted, they will become weightless. And when they are weightless, they will fly and move in the atmosphere, in the sky, just as clouds fly and move in the sky. And if you look at the mountains, subhanAllah, they are the most striking examples of stability. Is there anything more heavier on this earth than the mountains? The most striking examples of stability yet. They will be swept away as though they were just a mirage that never have ever existed. They will fly in front of your eyes. Allahu Akbar. Everything he clings to in this life is flying around him like dust. All those mansions that you own, all those cars that you own, all those assets that you own, all those beautiful suits that you own, all those ships and boats and whatever that you own. All that money that you own. Every night you count 20, 30, 40, 100. Every night, every night, every night. But you have no reflect upon your Iman. How much good deeds did I perform today? No, no, no. Your worry is 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Is that 70 going to go with you in the grave? Or is your Iman going to go with you in the grave? Reflect what's going to go with you, the Iman or the money? The mansion on the top of the beach? The car? The Lamborghini? What's going to go with you in the grave? Nothing but your Iman. 
He's a poor person. He's exactly the same as the richest person in the grave. Except if he was more God-fearing, he would be better than him. Reflect, dear creatures, reflect. We have nothing in this life. Everything is an exam for you, everything. Whatever you own, you own it for one reason, as an exam. The sun, the moon will be folded up and joined together, one into the other, and it will be deprived of its light. The stars, the planets will be scattered about, they will grow dark and they will fall down. The heaven will be stripped off, taken away. The seas, the oceans, the rivers will overflow and they will become a blazing fire. And then, when all that happens on the plane of resurrection, Allah Ta'ala will erect the balance, the scales. And there, the hearing of the cases of the people will be in progress. As for he whose balance of deeds we will be heavy, he will have a pleasant life. He will have a pleasant life. That will be the day, dear creatures, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will unveil his kingdom. The kingdom of the Almighty Lord will be in full veil before the people in its true reality. Hellfire with all its contents, with all its punishment will be visible to all. Paradise with all its beauty, adornment, its bliss will be visible to all. But why? So the wicked people should see that which they are deprived of and where they will be casted thereafter. And the righteous should see that which they have been saved from and that which they will be blessed with. Allahu Akbar. How can we make that balance of ours heavy on the day of resurrection? Yet now we say, how can we do it? Wallahi, every single person at this very time in front of him is a door which is widely open, widely open. All you have to do is go and get a big bag and pick up the good deeds and put them in the back. So your balance become heavy. Is it hard to fill up the good deeds? Very easy. Isn't the door open for you? Yes, it is open for you. What you are doing now, wallahi, now, right now, your scale of deeds is becoming heavier. How? Because you're listening to a righteous lesson. A lesson of Islam. Performing prayers. Prescribed and optional. That will raise your scale. At night time. After you have slept. Halfway through the night. Get up and do wudu in the most adverse times. Get up and do wudu, you're a Muslim, get up! Wake up! Do you not want your days to be heavy? Wake up and perform two the Qur'an. Is it hard? No, it's not hard. It's easy. If you want it to be easy. And imagine the reward involved in that. Fasting! Not only in the month of Ramadan, fast every Monday and Thursday. Fast? Is it hard? No! I told you the door of good deeds is open for you. It's not hard. But you gotta make it easy for yourself. It's there for you already. This is all deeds you just gotta pick up. And pack them up in your bags. Pack it up. Pack it up. You prefer to have 1 billion 50 kilo bags of good deeds than only half a 50 kilo bag. Isn't it logical? And the way you do this is by chasing and chasing and chasing the good deeds. Not chasing the moil, the money. That's not going to help you. Your good deeds are going to help you. Performing Hajj, Umrah, Allahu Akbar, the reward you will get. Given in the, given in the way of Allah Ta'ala, openly, secretly, obligatory, optional, give. Do you never ever think that this Money you're giving, you are losing. Wallah, you are never a loser. You are always a winner and it's a purifier for you. Don't be stingy. Keeping your promises, our brothers and sisters, for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. Upholding the ties of kinship. Having patience 
for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. Howling your soul from obscenity and indecent speech. And in general, brothers and sisters, fulfilling the amana of Allah Ta'ala, the trust which He has entrusted upon you before you were even created, the covenant when He created Adam, which is to fulfill all the obligations and to refrain from all His prohibitions. And indeed, if you do that, brothers and sisters, wallahi, you will be the inheritors who will inherit Al Firdaus Al Ahla, the highest of paradise the highest of paradise. But ascending to those lofty places in paradise is not easy. It needs a great deal of effort, strong determination and willpower, strong disciplines. Because the hadith clearly mentions that hellfire is veiled with whims and desire. As for paradise, it is veiled with hardships. As for he whose balance of deeds is light, he indeed will have his abode in Hawiyah. And what will make you know what it is? It is indeed a hot blazing fire. Hawiyah is a deep pit of raging fire, a hot blazing fire, a flaming inferno, you can say. And when Allah Ta'ala created hellfire, He had it burned for 1,000 years until it became red. Then for another thousand years until it became black. And that black is a gloomy darkness. And Al-Bukhari and Muslim report that the Prophet wasallam said, the fire of the son of Adam is only one part to the 70th part or of the 70 parts of the fire of the hell, the hell, Allah Billah. They said the companions, O Messenger of Allah, would not, would not that be sufficient? In other words, would not the heat of the earthly fire be sufficient in hell? He said, indeed, the fire of hell is more fierce by 69 times. In subhanAllah, the reality, can you place your finger on the fire of this world? Another narration mentions that if a person gets dipped into the hellfire and after feeling the intense heat of the hellfire, he will be able to sleep on the fire of this world. He will be able to sleep like a bed in comparison with the hellfire. Imagine how hot that is. After all this excitement, he will become hungry. Say he will eat. He won't go for roast chicken and chips. He will go and have his treat with Dariya, a thorny, obnoxious plant. And it will neither nourish nor satisfy your hunger. And the more you eat of it, the more suffering that you will get. Because your food is fire. Your food is fire. You're surrounded by fire. Everything is fire. Oh, if you don't like Dariya, you can go eat a Zakum. You prefer Zakum? People are fire? You can go eat a zakum, and a zakum is a horrible tree, a repulsive tree. It's so ugly that the fruits of that tree has been likened, resembled to the devil's heads. And its roots will be deeply rooted right down to the bottom pit of the fire. And they will eat and eat of this tree. But the more they eat, the more they suffer and it becomes to churn, boil, like boiling water. And they will get thirsty, very thirsty. What would they get now, water? Cold water from the fridge? No. Their drink will be al hamim extremely hot water. And they will drink and drink and drink and drink, but they cannot quench their thirst. Instead, it will burn their insides. It will burn their insides. This is the hospitality that they will receive on that awesome day. May Allah save us by His grace and mercy. O oh, people of paradise, eternity no death. O oh, people of hellfire, eternity no death. Brothers and sisters, take heed of this beautiful surah, Surah Al-Qari'ah. 
and prepare yourself for that mighty day. As time goes, the more mischief appears, and we know that you, O oh believer, you are like a stranger if you're worshipping Allah Ta'ala. For indeed, Islam began as something strange, and it will return as something strange. So be with those strangers. So be a stranger. Be a stranger. Meaning, when you worship Allah Ta'ala on the correct way, you are going to be looked as though you are an extremist. You are hold of Billah, you've gone crazy or mad or wild. We are Muslims and nothing but Muslims. You are a Muslim and so say you are a Muslim and no other. And the day has come, as our beloved Prophet وسلم, said, He who wants to worship Allah, it's as though you are grabbing a heat bead. You know, a heat bead lit. That's the situation we are in today. It is as though you are grabbing a heat bead. Brothers and sisters, avoid the evil that surrounds you. Do not be deceived by those unbelievers. We are in need to stick together today. Unite, work hard, commit more righteousness, learn more, attend lessons, wake up, reflect. Tonight or tomorrow you will die. Tonight or tomorrow you will die. And you will be asked about every second that you passed on this earth. I call them at us now. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il muslimin. Ta astaghfiruh. Inna hu ghafoor rahim. Oh, honey.